Okay, so lesson 25, we're gonna be dealing with situations where we have more than one uh, rate change, right? So the classic example we're gonna do in a minute is if you start expanding a circle, right? So if you have a circle that's growing over time, then there's gonna be a rate of change for how fast the radius is changing. But then there's also like another rate of change for how fast the area is changing of that circle, right? So hence related rates, right? That we can, we can actually like relate those two and then either figure out how fast the circle's area is expanding or how fast the circle's radius is expanding, right? And there's other, other situations like that too, right? And you can kind of see from that how that might be useful in engineering, right? There's like lots of places where you'd want to figure out how fast is something changing when something else is changing, right? So it's a, yeah, it's a big uh, engineering concept. So to do this, we're going to be using implicit differentiation. Do you guys remember what that was from way back in the first or second unit there, derivatives. So yeah, it, it, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll go back and do it, but it, it was that situation where we had, um, you had to take like the derivative of y and then it was like dy d, dx, right? After it, that was that implicit differentiation. Yeah, we're getting back into that whole in respect to something else, right? In this case, what we're gonna be doing with related rates is it's pretty much always gonna be with respect to time. So as time is changing, how are these other things changing, right? How, how are those rates changing as, as the, the clock keeps ticking, right? So we're pretty much always gonna be differenti differentiating with respect to time. And if you remember how we show that, that's dx dt, if that was the derivative of x with respect to time. And these d's, like it is the derivative, but you can almost think of these d's as being very similar to like change in x over change in time, right? It's a similar idea. All right. So in this example, it says find the derivative of x plus y squared is equal to 15 with respect to time. Okay. So this is a little bit different than before because we were doing it where we were doing um, these implicit differentiation questions with respect to x, right? So now we're doing it with respect to t, right? So we're going to have to chain rule this thing for both. We're going to have to chain rule this thing for x and for and for y. Okay, so let's do the first one. So, so the um, derivative of x would be, well, what would that be? The derivative of x is just one, right? But then what do you have to tag on onto that as well? X yeah, and we're gonna be using uh, liveness notation from now, pretty much from now on. So it's gonna be dx dt. You guys kind of follow me on that one? So I'm just... Yeah, so, so really what happened here is we just took the derivative of x, right? And are you okay with saying the derivative is, is usually one, right? The derivative of x is just, we just end up being one there. We've done a lot of that. Okay, so it's one, but then like if this was, you know, x to the one, right? And you, and you brought that down, took the derivative, then you'd still have to take the derivative of like the inside, right? Like chain rule with respect to time. So we have to tag on there dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to time. Yeah, so that's the first part there, right? Which is just dx dt. So derivative of x with respect to time is dx dt, okay? Plus, now the derivative of 2y with respect to time would be 2y, right? Doing like the outside there. And then chain rule, like doing the inside of this now would be times d dy with respect to time, right? dy dt. So I've got two different rates there, right? I've got the rate of my x changing over time as time goes by and my rate of y changing as time goes by. So that's that's useful. That's that's we're, that's, we're going to be able to relate different rates, right? And then that's equal to and then the derivative of 15 zero. it's just zero, yeah. Okay. So there you go. So find the derivative of with that with respect to time. So that would be that would be it, right? Like that is kind of the derivative. We can't really do any more than that. But now in, in B it says find dx dt, right? So find this one when y is three and dy dt is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so now it's just filling in now, right? So if we know if we just rearrange this, right? dx dt is equal to negative two y times dy dt. So then dx dt 
is equal to negative 2 times, and then y was 3, and then dy dt was 0 0.5. So yeah, so that's going to be equal to negative 3. How's everybody doing on that so far? We're going to be doing a ton of that, right? That's, that's really what's, coming, what's, what's happening here. Yeah? So in a graph, if x would be the radius, if we just assume that x is the radius and y is the area, so how do we show time in the graph? You know what? Let's keep going for a second. I'm going to show you that circle one, if we're doing the area of a circle, like, like I think what you're talking about. And I, may, I, like, I created my own question where it kind of shows like a graph of it changing over time. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah. So steps for solving related rate problems, we're going to, it's a lot like physics um, when, we, when we get into this one, right? We're going to make a picture of what's happening. We're going to figure out um, the variables, right? We're going to figure out what we actually know, what our rates are, what our lengths are. We're going to relate um, known and desired quantities with a formula. So that would be the area of a circle, the area of a cylinder, maybe the volume of a cylinder, right? So some sort of relationship that, that connects those two pieces right like the area and the and the radius right they're connected with that formula and then substitute in only fixed or unchanging values and i'll, I'll show well i'll show you what i mean a little bit lower we can only substitute in fixed values because sometimes the radius will be changing over time right i can't plug it in yet i have to plug, yeah well, anyway we'll, we'll, we'll get to it i'll show you what i mean and then differentiate with respect to time and then substitute changing values into the differentiated expression so and then solve for the de uh, desired rate. So um, here's a bunch of formulas that you know we're going to be using in this in this unit, right? All the standard kind of area and volume formulas for common shapes. So let, let's look at this one. So a stone is dropped in a lake, creating a circular ripple that travels outward. The radius r of the ripple is increasing at a rate of three centimeters per second. Okay, so first off, three centimeters per second. What would that be? Yeah, this is, that is velocity, right? And, and now that we're in, in calculus, we're thinking more in terms of a rate of change, right? That this really would be the derivative, right? This, is, this would be dr dt, right? The derivative of r with respect to time, right? How is r changing as time passes, right? I'll show, you, I'll show you a little thing here. But anyway, so it says, determine the rate of increase of the area within the circle when the radius is equal to four centimeters. And then write the answer as an exact value. So here, I'm going to go to here. So I, I made like a little animation of this, right? So if you've got, like what, what it's saying here is that your radius is changing, right? So your radius is growing over time, okay? And the area, or sorry, at a certain point, right? When I get to a certain, a certain radius there, the area is changing at a certain rate, right? Because actually the, the area is changing at an increased rate. It's not, it's not linear like the, like the radius is, right? The radius is like a linear relationship. It's, it's increasing constantly over time. But the area as time goes by is increasing exponentially, right? Or, so it's going up quicker. So I made a little yeah, graph of the way that would kind of look and how that makes sense. So as time is going by, right? Time is across the bottom. In, in my in my graph here and up and down is both radius and area right depending on which one you're looking at so you can see that the radius versus time is a is going up consistently right or constantly but do you guys see how the slope or the derivative at any given point for the area is a changing quantity right it's it's changing as it's going up and up and up and it gets quicker and quicker and quicker right so what the question is saying is that so determine the rate of increase of the area within the circle when r is equal to four centimeters right so that just means that a certain radius right when you go out far enough that that area is going to be increasing at a certain rate but it's a little bit confusing because that rate is changing right it's a it, the steepness of the of the tangent line is changing over time right okay so that's what we're after so let, so let's do this one so we would first write down like a little little drawing so let's draw a circle and we have radius r and then we know over time this circle 
is going to be at four centimeters, right? It's going to get to a certain point. It's going to be four centimeters. Okay, and we want to know how fast the area is growing when we get right to that point. Okay, so let's figure out our knowns. So what do we know? So we know R is equal to four centimeters at that point. It, it is changing. What else do we know? What's that, sir? Yeah, we do. What about like uh, values though? Like, what what is this three? Like, what what would our? Yeah, that's going to be our dr dt, right? That's the rate that the radius is changing, right? And that's constant. It's, it's doing that. It's that, it's that same rate the whole time, isn't it? The steep, like the the graph was a straight line there. Okay, so that's going to be three centimeters per second, which makes sense. It's a speed, right? And then we're just looking for the derivative of a with respect to time, dA dt. How fast is the area changing, right? That's what that, that's what that means. Okay. Um, all right. So then the formula, the formula for the area of a circle is A is equal to pi R squared. Okay. So can I, maybe you, guys, you probably won't know this yet. <laughs> can I uh, just plug in four for R? Why can't I just plug in four for, for R? I mean, that won't be not what we're looking for. We're just going to use the area at that certain point in time. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to be kind of done at that point. That would just actually give me the area at that certain point in time, right? Yeah, I, I got to take the derivative of this first, right? So that I can actually get some some rates in, in my equation. So if I, like, if I just throw in R now, that's not going to work. This is what it meant when we were saying here, right? When it said... Um, uh, what does it say? Oh, yeah, substitute in only fixed or unchanging values at this point, right? That R value, as, like, as tar time is going by, right, it started out small and then was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That R is a changing value, right? So you want to somehow put the 3 into it, okay, that is a not changing value. Right, yeah. Well, well, the three, yeah exa well, the 3 isn't changing, but I don't even have this in the equation yet. But you're trying to put it in the equation. Yeah, how can I, how can I derive an equation... Right, where I can put three into it. Well, three is just the derivative of yeah, so um, can I get into this? We gotta take the derivative, right? We gotta start getting some d d d something d dts, right? So let's take the derivative. So the derivative of a would just be d a d t. <laughs> okay, and then what I'm gonna do here is is whenever you get a constant like pi just pull it out, right? We, we can just pull out those constants out front. So then that would just really be, you know, pi is still right there. And then the derivative of r squared would be 2r times dr dt, right? Perfect. Now I got some things, right? Now I can like actually put some numbers into this. And remember, I'm looking for this one, right? I'm looking for the like dA dt, right? Now I'm looking for dA dt when the radius is four, so now I'm actually good to, now I'm good to throw it in. Yeah, so that, that comes after, right? You get, like, you have to throw that number in after you've taken the derivative. So that's that's a common place to make a mistake, right? People will throw those numbers in too soon. You have to wait until you've taken the derivative of it. So, so now we can just plug it in, right? So we're looking for dA dt, and that's equal to, and then I'm just gonna write this as two pi times the radius of four and then dr dt was 3. Okay, so that's going to be 24 pi. And then what would my units be? Yeah, centimeters squared. It's one more part of that. Per second, right? dA dt, right? Change in area over change in time, right? So it's centimeters squared per second. Okay, that's it. Nothing to it, eh? <laughs> so the good thing is, once we took the derivative of this too, right? We we made ourselves a little equation where we can now figure out the rate of change of the area at any radius, right? That's our that's our like powerful equation there now. So it says now determine the rate of increase of area when r is ten. Okay, well we've already done the hard work. We have the formula. 
we just got to plug 10 in now instead of 4. Right? So this is our, our equation, the one, the one up there. So this would just be dA dt is equal to 2 pi times 10 times 3. So 60 pi. And since we're in math, we do like to leave things as exact values if we can. But from time to time, especially in this one, we'll, we'll just be doing like a, also like an approximate because sometimes it's helpful to kind of know what that's about, right? But, okay, next one. So we have a cylindrical tank has a radius of five meters and a height of nine meters. Water is draining out of it at a rate of five meters cubed per minute. Determine the rate at which the surface level of the water is falling as an exact value and then as a rounded value to the nearest hundred. So pretty much always we want to make a little sketch. So let's make a cylinder. Which is just two ovals and then connect the side. Okay, so let's label in what we know here. So it told us that the radius, the radius is five meters. Do that a little different. Okay, uh, what else do we know? We know the height of this cylinder is nine. So that's the height of the cylinder. And now we, we want to figure out how fast the water is draining out of this thing, right? So inside this, right, it started at the top. And then as time goes by, the height from here to here is going to be decreasing, right? It's going to be like losing water over time. Okay, so what do we know? So we know the radius. The radius is five. And I just want to put a little star there. It's not changing, right? Because even as this thing goes down, it's not going to be, it's not going to be changing over time. Okay, so that's a, that's a constant. I can throw that in whenever I want. Okay, what else do we know? We know what was this number? Five meters cubed per minute. That's also a constant. Yeah, it will be. It will be. It's a rate of change. It, and it's the volume it's a constant rate. rate. Yeah, it's it's the volume. Yeah, and it is a constant rate. It's gonna be it's gonna be like changing constantly over time, or it's gonna be happening consistently over time, right? Um, and yeah, wh how what would we call this in Leibniz notation? This would be d. Dv over dt. Yeah, dv over dt, right? The rate of change of the volume over time. Okay, so what is that? That's going to be, this might be mind reading at this point. Think back to physics 20, this one always caught people. Remember when you were falling and the distance was negative? negative? Direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be negative five, right? It's, it's, it's decreasing, right? This, this, it started out at nine and now it's going down and down from there. Or it didn't start at nine, sorry, the, the rate. Yeah, anyway. The meters cubed is going down every minute. Okay, so we're good with that one. And then we're looking for, well, what are we looking for? Determine the rate at which the surface level of the water is falling. What would that be? Yeah, and in liveness notation, what would that look like? That would be dHdt. Yeah, perfect. That's what we're looking for. Would the time be a problem because it's five meters cubed per minute? Uh, no, that's okay. Time's just measured in minutes. Yeah. So you just have to assume. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna usually be that mean to you and make you like convert units a bunch. So, yeah, <laughs> it's more of a physics thing. Um, okay, so formula for this. So we're, our formula is going to be um, volume 
is equal to pi r squared, right, the area of the circle on the bottom, times height. Okay, I got a problem here. I got three. Like, like if I take the derivative of this, it's going to be an issue. Well, one thing I've got, I'd have to do like the product rule here, right, because I got those two, and I'd have chain rule and stuff involved. Any way I can make this simpler? You can take the pi out of common. Yeah, you can take the pi out. We can actually make it even a little bit simpler. Take the r out as well, so it's constant? Yeah, it is a constant, right? We, we're, we can throw that number in, right? Because 5 wasn't changing. It's always 5. So let's just throw that in right now. So let's, like, let's get the equation as simple as we can before we take the derivative. So v is equal to pi times 5 squared. times h. Okay, and then we'll just write that one more time. So v is equal to 25 pi times h. So there you go. Now I just have two, right? I've just got the volume. I've just got the height. I can relate these things a lot, a lot easier, right? So, okay, I think we're ready. Let's take the derivative. So the derivative of v is dv dt. This 25 just kind of gets pulled out, right? I don't have to worry about taking the derivative of that. So it's just 25, oh, 25 pi. And then the derivative of h is dh dt. Perfect. Those are some of the things I know, right? So we're looking for this, right? We're looking for the, how fast is the height changing? And we have, we have the, how fast the, the rate of change for the volume, right? So let's just plug it in now. So this is just negative five is equal to 25 pi times dh dt. So dh dt is just equal to negative one over five pi meters per minute. Okay, and then, yeah, so what this really means then, right, is that the surface level is falling at one meter per minute, or one over five pi meters every minute, yeah? And this is just to get like an approximation on that, right? This is the same thing as negative 0 0.06 meters per minute. Gives you a bit more of an intuitive sense how fast that actually is, right? Oh, do I? All right. Everybody everybody doing okay still? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so just keep going. We're just going to keep doing different examples now with different shapes, right? But this is the, this is the main concept. So, um, Okay, so in this one, it says wa a water tank is built in the shape of a circular cone with height 5 meters and diameter 6 meters at the top. Uh, water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 1.6 meters cubed per minute. Find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is two meters deep. Okay, so first thing let's do. So let's make a picture. Okay, so this cone, they tell us, has a height of five meters. And it'll be a bit more useful just to write down the radius right now, even though they gave us the diameter. So what's the radius? Three. Yeah, three, right? Yeah, so three meters. Okay, so that's the, the height and the radius of that cone, right? So now what's helpful for these ones is to draw a second, a second little uh, cone inside there. Right, because this is what's happening is the, the water is being poured into this thing and it's, it's going up over time, okay? And we want to know, find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is two meters deep. So from here to here, like when this is two. And then in this case, I don't know what this is going to be, like that R value right there. So I'm just going to write R for a second. It will be, yeah, there'll be a changing value, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So let's let's write down what we have. So, um, we have a height. Height is equal to two meters. And that one is changing, right? That thing's getting that, that's changing over time. Uh, we know dv dt is equal to what? Yeah, the volume, yeah, 1.6 yeah, meters cubed per minute. And we're looking for dh dt. Okay, so let's, uh, I just want to show you what the problem is going to be in this question. This is kind of like a specific type of question. So let's write down our equation for, the, for this. So the volume of a cone is one third pi times r squared times h. All right, so I nowhere in this question does it say anything about the changing rate of the radius, right, of this cone. I'm re I'm really interested in h. I'm I'm interested in the changing rate of the height of this cone, right? So I would sure rather have this thing that it was in terms of v and h, right? If, and then the others were just constants. That would be a that would be nice, right? I wouldn't have to deal with like taking the derivative of this. Like I said, I'd also have to like you know do the product rule there, which would be annoying. Um, yeah, can you guys think of any way that we can relate R and H together so that we can just we're, just make this equation a little different so that it's just just has H in it instead of R? I'll give you a hint. Is it a triangle? Yeah, it's got something to do with with that what's happening over here, right? With our similar triangles. You guys see we have two triangles made here. We got this triangle. And then we have the bigger one. So we can relate those sides, right? So what I mean by that, let's make our let's make a little equation, right? So um, we can say r over h. Here I should. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't have put two in there. Can you guys erase erase that and put just h there for a second? Because that thing is changing, but we want to know when it is too, right? But it'll be helpful just to call it h for now. So we can say that R, R over H would be equal to three over five, right? Just setting those two ratios equal to each other. So then I can, I can just rearrange this a little bit. That would mean that R is equal to three over five times H. Now you physics people, what, what do you think we could do with that? Yeah, we can substitute that in, can't we? Right? Why not replace that R with, with this expression? So we'll write it in as V is equal to 1 over 3 pi. And then instead of an R, I'm going to be putting in three over five H. I just made it red so you can see that it was the same. I just replaced the R there, right? Okay, and then we'll just clean this up a bit. So V is equal to, um, that ends up being, if you square it like with the three and the five and then simplify, you end up getting three pi over 25 um, H cubed. Okay, that's, that's a lot easier to take the derivative of, isn't it? So I think we're ready, right? That's about as simple as we can get. So let's take the derivative. So we're, we'll take the derivative of, so it'll be dv dt is equal to this coefficient out front. I'm just not going to worry about that again. That's just 3 pi over 25. And then I'm just taking the derivative of h cubed. So that would be times 3h squared and then times dh dt. That's exciting. That's the one we're looking for. <laughs> okay. So 
Okay, so, so then from there, are you guys you guys kind of see where we're probably going here? Now we're just kind of plugging things in, right? Now we know dv dt, we know that value. That's 1.6. Why did they become 3, 5, over 25? Oh, just here? That was just if you squared 3, that'd be 9. If you squared 5, that'd be 25. And then 9 over 3 would leave you a 3 on the top and 25 on the bottom. Okay, so yeah, here, you know what, let's, uh, let's clean that up one more time though. So I'll say dv over dt is equal to 9 pi over 25. Um, h squared times dh dt, All right? That would be like our equation that we can start throwing things in, right? Okay, so we know dv dt is really 1.6, right? That's the rate that the volume is changing over time. And then if I throw in, what was that? Two, right? So that's gonna be nine pi over 25 times two squared. Why am I throwing a two in there? Yeah, this, this is the height I'm interested in, right? I wanna know what the rate of change is at that height. Yeah, so okay, so we're gonna throw that two in now, right? Now we can do it, because we know that, that because that, that number was changing but we want to know the rate of change at that particular moment, right? So now I can throw it in and then times dh dt, and that's the thing we're looking for. Okay. Is height cubed just because it's like- It's, vol it, uh, just what, it's volume? Yeah, because it's volume, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is really, here one more time, 1.6 is equal to 36 pi over 25 times dt, or no, dh dt, sorry guys, dh dt. Okay, and if you just rearrange this, 1.6 times 25, um, we, and then divided by 36, we end up getting 10 over 9 pi is equal to dh dt. Okay, so I'm getting kind of squished here, but you know, right on the other side here, that would also be equal to 0 0.4. And then what would my units be on that one? Would it be, yeah, meters per minute. This is a height. All right, last one for this lesson. <laughs> okay, uh, gravel is being poured off a conveyor belt onto a uh, conical pile at a rate of uh, 10 feet cube per second. The height of the pile is increasing um, at a rate of 0 0.2 feet per second. How fast is the radius of the pile increasing when the, ra when, uh, the radius is three feet and the height is four feet around your around to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so. Are these two different questions? Uh, not really, we're gonna be able to do it all in one. Yeah, but you know how I kept on kind of alluding to this, we're saying like, wouldn't that be annoying if we had to use the product rule? We're, that, that's what we're gonna be stuck with now. Yeah. Okay, so let's draw our picture. So it's being poured off a conveyor belt and it's turning into a pile. And we're approximating that to a cone. Okay, so what do we know? We know dv dt. Which is equal to 10 feet cubed per second. We also know we also know um, dh dt and what's that? That's going to be zero point two, right? Or zero point zero two feet per second. Okay. 
We kind of know the radius. Yeah, so we, we we're interested in when the radius is three feet, right? So I'll put in three for now. But that's going to be at a specific moment, right? It's a changing it's a changing value. And we know the height is four feet. And we are after how fast the radius of the pile is increasing. So we're after dr dt. All right, so let's write our equation. So our equation is V is equal to one third pi r squared times h. And now, can I throw the numbers in? Can I throw in like three for r and four for h? No, both of these numbers were at a specific time, right? That was that. That's a, that's a changing value, and I want to know after I take the derivative, right? So those can't go in yet. So I'm kind of stuck at this point where, you know, there's no relation I can make where I can like get rid of the R and put it in terms of H, right? And, and the thing is, I actually want to know what the rate of change of R is. So I want to leave that in there. So when I take the derivative, I get a dr dt waiting for me there, right? So I want that. So I actually want to just take the derivative just as it is. So I've got three things I got to do now. So let's, let's start taking the derivative of this. This would be dv would be, or sorry, the derivative of the volume would be dv dt. And then I'm going to pull the one third pi out. And then I'm going to do this next part in brackets, just so I can kind of see it more clearly. So I got to do product rule with this, right? Where this R squared is my F and this H would be like my G. So, okay, this would be R squared, right? Just that's like F times the derivative of H which would be dh dt plus, and then it's gonna be the derivative of r. So what would that be? That would be two r times dr dt, yep. And then just times g, so h. Okay, so let's uh, let's throw some numbers in now, right? Like we know, we know we know most of these. So dv dt, it was ten, and then we're we still have one third pi. Am I safe to put the radius in now? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, we've taken the derivative. I want to know it at this exact moment. So yes, now we can throw it in. So the radius was three squared. Uh, dh dt, I know that one too. That's 0 0.02, right? That was how fast it was increasing. Plus two times, and then the radius was three. And then I don't know dr dt, but that's good. That's the one I'm looking for, right? So I'm just gonna write dr dt again. And then h, I do know that one at this moment as well. So that's four. Okay, now the rest is algebra. We just need to we just need to solve for that now, right? So okay, if we Yeah, let's go, let's rewrite this again. So this would be ten is equal to. And then I'm gonna throw like the pi over three. I'm gonna distribute it distribute it into this. You guys okay with that? Into this term and into this term. I just want to keep the pi. That's, that's the problem. I don't want to just put it all into, into decimals yet, right? So I'll throw it into that. So this first part here would be 3 pi, which is just 9 over 3, right? So 3 pi. And then the next part here, I'd like there not to be this decimal. So can we write that decimal as a fraction instead? What would that be? 2 over 100. Yeah, 2 over 100. Okay, so I'll just leave it like that for a second plus and then if you you know two times three times four divided by the three i'm bringing in we get eight pi and then 
dr dt. Okay, now the next row, I'm just going to simplify this up. So that would just be 3 over 50 pi plus 8 pi times dr dt. So I'll bring this term over to the left side. So that'd be 10 minus 3 pi over 50 is equal to 8 pi times dr dt. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite this one with a common denominator. So that would just be multiplying this 10 by 50 over 50, right? So that would be 500 minus 3 pi all over 50. Okay. And then at the same time, I'll bring this 8 over pi over to this side too, right? So that'd be like 1 over pi or just, you know, the 8 over pi is on the, in the denominator is equal to dr dt. Okay. And then just 50 times 8. That's kind of the last thing I can do here. So 500 minus 3 pi over 400 pi is equal to dr dt. And we're done. And then that's roughly equal to, what is that, 0 0.39 feet per second.